Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. We got another recap. Married at First Sight, Season 13, Episode 12. We're going to jump into this. But before we do, if you're new here, hit that subscribe button. Turn on your notifications. And if you like the video, smash that like button and drop a comment down below. We got a lot to unpack, especially with two couples from tonight. So without further ado, let's get this show started. So... Um, the couples are now at day 33, I think, uh, 33 and 34 this week. And we're going to first start talking about, uh, Rachel and Jose. We didn't have a lot on them tonight. Um, we did see them go to look like this little, um, gym with these little, uh, courses that they had to go through where it was running and jumping and all that good stuff. They had a good time. They were bonding. They were kissing on each other, everything like that, especially which, of course, they went with uh, Brett and Ryan, who we'll talk about them a little bit later. But for the most part, for this particular episode uh, 12, we really didn't get a lot of dramatic content. Um, I will say the conversation that they had at the wine tasting was pretty interesting so one of the things that stuck out to me is what rachel was saying because now they're trying to prepare for the transition out of this you know experiment or this process into their real lives into their own homes and that was one of the subjects that rachel had brought up in regards to okay you don't have to leave your home but i have to leave mine well, honestly, that's nothing new. Usually it's, you know, I mean, in certain situations, somebody got to leave their home because the two of you are no longer independent. You're interdependent. So you're living together. You're building together. You're building your future together. So somebody is going to have to move into one space. Okay. The thing is, is that she feels that she's going to have to make some changes and that's to be expected. Anytime one of the partners in the relationship get married and they move into the other person's home, it is an adjustment. And either they're willing to do that or or if they can afford to maybe purchase a home or something or a space together so it'll feel like their home. I mean, that's been an ongoing discussion every season of the show whether or not what that transition is going to be like moving into another person's house the other thing is is that being that she is an educator and works as a teacher or for a school system she's off during the summer and one of the things that she mentioned is that he needs to prepare himself because her attitude get real cranky in the moment that she's criticized she's headed out the door She's going to have to look at that and make an adjustment. In the, I mean, you were used to living on your own for a long period of time. And so you can go in your room and brood and sulk and do whatever it is that, you know, you did during the summer months. You're now in a marriage. So there's some adjustments that's going to have to be made. It's not like it's some an illness that or something that you cannot change or that's terminal you can make an attitude adjustment. You can find stuff to do. So, I mean, that's something that she would definitely need to consider instead of being in that mind state. She, You get to choose how you want to feel. I mean, some people say you can't help how you feel. I disagree with that because people can automatically switch their mood when it's required. So in this case, she may need to figure out a way to make an adjustment because you're in a house with another person. This person happens to be your husband. <clears throat> now, I mean, we all know that Jose has, you know, whatever his issues are. But at the same time, she's telling him, this is who I am. You got to deal with it. Mm, just, you have to make an adjustment. You have to make compromises and adjustments and sometimes sacrifices when you are in a marriage. I'm not saying just totally change yourself, but you do have to make some adjustments. And if attitude adjustment is one of them or finding a hobby, 
finding something to do. That's what she needs to do. You know, I mean, it's got to be something instead of being stuck in that mindset where she's walking around for three months that she's out of school angry and frustrated and telling him he needs to prepare himself. No, you need to figure out what you can do to make an attitude adjustment. That's in your control. I mean, he's out there working at NASA or even if this was anybody else, it wasn't Jose. I don't think no partner want to come home to a brooding partner because they're bored. Find something to do. There are things to do around the house, take up a hobby, start an online business, do crafts, something to boost your your mood. She already works out a lot, you know, so that's not an issue. So, I mean, it's all about re reevaluating your life. This is a life-changing situation when you're in a marriage. So hopefully that's something she can consider. All right, let's talk about Michaela and Zach. Um, they didn't have too much tonight, but it just seems that what I see, in my opinion, it was pretty much superficial. Now, I mean, they're just coming off of working off of everything that they went through for the past probably week and a half. And Michaela is talking to her sister saying, oh, yeah, I love him. I love Zach. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And so she has this big smile on her face. Maybe they're in a good place behind the scenes. We don't get to see every minute of the day. But, you know, as for Zach, I don't know if he's there yet as far as she is. Um, I mean, even when they have had to use their name to create a poem, each letter of their name, hers was, uh, hers was very heartfelt. And, I mean, she came up with different things. Now, he was kind of silly with his, but I will say, you know, I'm surprised. Michaela was definitely appreciative of, you know, the creativity that was involved in what Zach did. Um, we did see them uh, do the little bubble bumper thing. And, you know, I think she came in the door thinking that she was going to topple him over. And, you know, he was like, I don't want to hurt her. You know, don't push too hard. And I think we saw more more times, you know, she hit the floor and kind of bounced, per se, versus Zach. You know, I think I saw Zach. But I thought that was a fun activity. I just... Is I'm not, especially coming off of what has happened. Now, if this was a continuation of what we saw at the beginning of the season, where they were instantly attracted to each other, instantly falling for each other, but due to him catching the virus and then this whole misunderstanding about him walking the dog and leaving the house and she moving out and their tone, her tone rather, and all of this stuff, it's just been an uphill battle. Now, that's not to say that they could, can't overcome it. And maybe this is what this is. I'm hoping this is the case. I've seen and heard the spoilers out there. Who knows? I've heard a lot of other things. I don't know if you checked the other video that I posted the other day about Zach. Go check that out. But um, I really, I was really, really rooting for these two you know, and how far they can go. And I mean, I like the fact that he was saying that he appreciates her natural hair and how beautiful she looked and she was just smiling. So they pretty much had a, a happy-go-lucky episode. It really wasn't much to talk about. So we'll see what happened next week because he's crying next week. All right, let's talk about Merla, Mirla, and Gil. So they're pretty much still on the same trajectory same pathway they're you know really vibing with each other i mean they were also talking about the transition of uh once this um process is over on moving into a new place as well now she has her expectations of what the place is supposed to look like and gil is like you're doing too much but i will say as much as gil throw his two cents in about you know, how she wants to be over the top and you always want things new because there's this thing she wants a new cell phone too. You know, he still go out there and, and try to slay the dragons to get what she wants. So I find that pretty interesting. I mean, 
My question is, how long is that going to last? Because as time go on, the relationship tends, of course, the relationships get older, not in a bad way, but through the measurement of time. At what point is he going to be like, okay, you're doing too much. Every time you want something, I got to go run for it. I mean, he could still say, hey, I'm going to do what it takes to make my, my wife happy. But is that the case? I mean, she wants a house. He wants an apartment. Um, and so where is the happy medium? And she had a conversation with her friend and, uh, you know, over the phone. And that conversation was pretty interesting because she was telling her friend that she don't like going to people's houses. And Gil is a social guy. So he is the entertainment type of person he likes to go and visit and talk to his friends and family and as you know his wife most guys want their wives to be with them you know what are you gonna say i don't want to be in the crowd i'll stay home now i mean it does happen and you know the spouse expect i've seen it but i mean how often are you going to do that for the rest of your life every time there's an event that somebody's having at the house the family are you going to be like, no, nah, I don't want to go. And like her friend said, you they're going to look at you like you a bee. You know, and she was like, I don't care. Well, you should care about, you know, what your husband think on that. So it's going to be interesting to see how that's going to work out. And then Gil had a conversation with, I think, his guy friend. And, you know, he was asking, did you consummate the marriage? He was like, no, not right now, but I don't doubt that we will. And I'm like, yeah, okay. Women gives access to sex. So that's up to, that's going to be clearly up to Mirla if she's going to, I mean, they're in a marriage, but I don't know. We'll have to see uh, what direction that's going to go. And he was kind of complaining to his friend about her, you know, being bougie and and stuff like that but as much as he complained he still said he tried to do the best for her so we'll see how that goes with these two but they really didn't have too much of a big blow up of drama so moving on okay next up is one of the couples that um i wanted to talk about tonight and that's uh brett and ryan brett is struggling and I found it interesting because I've been seeing on social media that a lot of people's opinion is that Brett is not, I'm, I'm, uh, no, Ryan, these names, Ryan is not attracted to his wife because he said she's a good wife, she's a great person, she's this, she's that, she's that. And I remember one of uh, Ryan's friends, uh, the lady friend that was visiting him, she asked him if it was Miss America or you know, I forgot, maybe it was a reference to somebody that was like a prominent female figure, Miss America, whatever, was making you breakfast, would you be complaining to her like you feel the same about Brett? And he was like, oh no, I'll fix her breakfast. So it's physicality, it sounds like to me. He kind of validated what a lot of folks are saying in regards to where his attraction lies. I don't think that, you know, myself, she is not an attractive person. She's a very beautiful uh, young lady. I just think that from what it looks like, it's not, she's not his type. And so I know people are like, oh, well, he ain't all that and blah, blah, blah. Everybody has a type. Everybody is not going to be attracted to everybody. Let's just keep it real. So that's why I don't get mad and jump all over the place when somebody says they're not attracted to somebody because everybody, just like certain pair of clothes that you wear, certain things that you bring into your life that attract you, they are things that are not attractive to you. It's the same thing with people. You're not, everybody's not attracted, uh, attractive to you, and you're not everybody's person either. So I'm just going to leave that right there. But the thing is, he's struggling with that because he also noticed she has had this happen to her before. It's happened um, from relationships. She said that she always was wondering whether she was going to be that one to where they can just solidify and confirm that, hey, you my girl. So he knows that and he don't want to hurt her. And that's got to be killing him. But that's the risk you take when you are being in an arranged marriage. 
you put it in the hands of the experts to say, look, I'm going to let you three, Dr. Pepper, Dr. V, and Pastor Cal, to pick my person. And you put down on your paperwork what you wanted. So now, you know, he said, I wanted a good person. Well, guess what? That's what you got. But now, because it's not in the idea in your head of what you think it should be, now we got a problem. So he has a whole four weeks to figure this out. And it don't it's look like it might not get any better anytime soon unless he put in the work. Look like the previews for next week. He have a conversation with the experts. Maybe there's going to be a change, but we'll have to see. But he definitely have to not make up a story about being sleep. Or I need to get sleep. And that's why I can't do this. Dude, you know what this is. And you need to be honest with her. So, next. Okay, last but not least. And the most drama of the night, Bao and Johnny. Bao, I know I said some things in the previous episode on my last recap about Bao. Because we didn't see a lot of what she was doing. So, you know, and he, I, one thing about me, if I stand to be corrected, I'll admit to it. So, this episode shed a lot more light on a lot of things. One thing I will say about Bao is she has a lot of patience and perseverance. Because this man is all over the place. And kind of like his aunt says, or I think one of his family members said at the picnic that he did not take his wife to, which was, I just want those feelings like I'm in high school. And and, and dude was, and you know, the family member was like, uh, Johnny, you grown. You're not in high school anymore. And he has this unrealistic expectation of what his person should be. And... I mean, and it's high. I mean, I need you to do this. I need you to do that. I need you to do this. And it seems like she's trying. That's the thing. Last week, I wasn't too sure about that. But this particular episode, it seemed like she's trying. She's meal prepping. She made the bolognese. She's doing this. She's doing that. Now, some folks might say, oh, she just did that for the cameras. Okay, but she was standing by that that man hugged up when he was spazzing out. And I mean, she's like she said, she's tolerated more than most women would have because for him to leave that girl at home and don't want uh, her around his family because he's afraid that they'll get attached to her, knowing that he probably won't be in her life or might walk away. You know, I, I was like, dude, really? And I had high hopes with this couple, too. In the beginning, I was like, oh, my God, these two would be great for each other because they they were clicking. I just think that Johnny got into his own way. He put this unrealistic expectation on Bao. They only been together three and a half weeks, not three and a half years. Like like uh, Bao said, we really don't know each other. We're still trying to figure each other out and learn each other. And then he talked about he may not be attracted to her and all of this type of stuff and going back and forth about what she should be and you need to be this and you need to be that. And it's like, dude, you need to slow down and stop. You're not everybody. Now, like I said, usually I don't go in on the attraction thing, like I said, with Brett and Ryan. But this guy is asking for a whole lot in regards to what he's looking for about. And she's trying her best to attain that. And that's the problem. You know, I'm hoping that it doesn't mentally drain her by him continuing to move the goalposts. Because that's the thing. You're moving the goalposts. And then he tells Pastor Cal... You know, this person is somebody, I wish she was some, uh, the person that I had was ever, anybody but her. And it's like, wow, you know. So, and I had to be hurtful. So, I'm, I, I'm glad Pastor Cal put a few harsh words on the table to kind of, you know, shake him up a bit and give him a little bit of a reality check. Because he definitely needed that at that point. Because that's the thing about expectations. 
it's not the fault of the other person that they don't meet it. Those are your ideals. Nobody can read minds. So unless you say, and I know he's been communicating this, that, and the third. But the thing is, is that she is not going to be that perfect person. Nobody's perfect. He's not perfect. He's not perfect. And I hear a lot of I, 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 I want, I need. Okay, but you got a wife there too. Are you doing, because he claims that he's doing what she's doing. I mean, for her, doing what he needs to do for her. That, I guess. I don't know. We don't get to see everything. But he needs to kind of bring down the expectation to everyday life and everyday world instead of this picture in his head like pastor cal say you need to cancel that put it in the have a funeral for whoever that idea in your head of that person is let that go because ain't no and that's probably why he was still single now because he's looking for that person that really don't exist he's looking for somebody like himself and you it's, it's usually hard to find somebody that's identical with everything that you do stop trying to get people to be you let them be them and you guys grow together and see how it works you're interdependent on each other you work together he you can't you can't make her a clone of yourself so that's my thoughts on those uh those two uh, hopefully they get it together I don't know. I don't foresee that because I heard some things about Bow. That's also part of that video I posted the other day. We'll see if it's true in about four weeks. But um, until the next video, sound off in the comment section. Let me know your thoughts, what you thought about this episode. Like, comment, and subscribe. And we will see you in the next one.